Hey, welcome to lesson number three in module five, Know What Matters. This lesson is called Your 80th Birthday. It's actually an exercise. I think you're going to find it uh, pretty enjoyable, actually. But before we get into the exercise, I want to tell you the stories of John and Camille and their examples of how they went through this exercise um, I think will help you help you when it comes to doing this exercise yourself. Okay, so we'll start with John. With his wife Dana and their two children, John recently moved into a home in their dream neighborhood. Excellent schools, lots of other young families, and a reputation for being a safe, closely knit community. John mostly works from home, which affords him greater flexibility than Dana, who often works long hours at an office. Dana would like for John to share some of the responsibility for the kids after school activities, you know, taking care, taking their daughter to soccer practice, uh, cheering their son on at hockey games, enrolling the kids in swimming lessons and carpooling with other parents, to name a few. John is convinced, however, that he won't be able to manage small talk with other parents and that he will never be accepted as one of the gang, so to speak. He worries that he'll be pegged as boring and inept, you know, the one to avoid talking to at any cost. So he's done little to help Dana with the kids, resulting in some tension in their marriage. He even avoids taking care of his lawn and flowers in case his neighbors are outside at the same time, and he's embarrassed at how shabby they look as a result. He watches enviously as other parents and neighbors mingle and chat with apparent ease, John feels that he is letting down his kids, his wife, his community, and himself. And then there's Camille. Camille is passionate about protecting the environment, hiking, and bird watching. She dreams of working at a non-profit organization, finding a partner with interests similar to hers, and being part of a small group of like-minded friends. Camille hasn't made much progress on the job front because of her intense fear of sweating in job interviews. She worries that when potential bosses shake her slippery hand, they will assume she is incompetent. Despite having completed a degree in environmental mental sciences five years ago, she works as a data entry clerk at her uncle's firm. She is also wary of meeting new people and has avoided groups and doing volunteer work as a result. She feels stuck from being in a boring job and having little to do with her free time. John and Camille both agreed that avoiding their social fears was keeping them from doing what really mattered to them. So I asked them to complete the exercise we're going to do together in this lesson as a way to get in closer touch with what they wanted to stand for and what they wanted to accomplish in their lives. So first, I'm going to read the question I pose to John and Camille and share their responses with you. And then I'll walk you through the exercise so you can do it yourself. Okay, so I asked John and Camille to imagine that you are attending your 80th birthday party. You have managed to live your life in a way that really matters to you. How would you want your life characterized? What would you want your friends and family to say about you in a speech? Okay, so that's the question I asked. Imagine you're attending your 80th birthday party. Your friends and family give a speech about you, um, you know, having lived the life that you truly want, that truly matters to you. What would they say? So let's look at John's speech. John is a great family man. As a father, he always puts the needs of his children first, guiding them from infancy to adulthood with love, patience, and respect, and was deeply involved in helping them to become the wonderful parents they both are today. As a grandparent to three gorgeous grandkids, he is beloved as chauffeur and cheerleader for many of their practices and games, no matter how early in the morning he has to get himself out the door. As a devoted husband to Dana for 55 years, he fully supports her career and shared with her in all the joy and heartache life presented to them. As well as a great family man, John is also a respected member of his community, someone we can always count on for help, advice, and a friendly chat. Okay, and now for Camille's speech. I'm sure the first thing that comes to mind for most of us when we think of Camille is her dedication to the environment. 
Through her amazing career at Greenpeace and tireless volunteer work, she has helped to make our world a safer and cleaner place for all living beings. As well, she and her partner in crime, Steve, have fearlessly guided us in hiking and biking trips on five continents, allowing us all to experience and appreciate the vast beauty of our precious earth. Camille has already planned our next trip to Antarctica, so gang, get out your parkas and sign up to see the penguins with our dear friend, Camille. All right, so now it's your turn. So I'm going to ask you to imagine your 80th birthday and to imagine that three different people stand up to make speeches about you. Okay, so we're just going to do one person, one speech, but you can do the other two on your own. And keep in mind, this is an imaginary exercise, so it doesn't have to follow the rules of logic. You can be 80, and your friends may look exactly as they do today, and you can have people there who are already dead, or who will be dead by the time you're 80, and if you want to have children one day, then you can have your children be there too. Uh, also keep in mind, you aren't trying to realistically predict the future. If magic could happen so that all your dreams come true, then what would your 80th birthday look like? And if your mind pipes in with thoughts like, that person would never say that about me, or no one would ever talk about my birthday, say, thanks mind, and bring your focus gently back to the exercise. Okay? So, I invite you to get into a comfortable position and close your eyes. For the next few breaths, Focus on emptying your lungs, pushing all the air out and allowing them to fill by themselves. Notice your breath flowing in and flowing out. Notice how once the lungs are empty, they automatically refill. And now, Allowing your breath to find its own natural rate and rhythm, no need to keep controlling it, I'd like you to imagine. Imagine your ideal 80th birthday. If magic could happen and all your dreams come true. So it's your 80th birthday and everyone who truly matters to you, friends, family, parents, children, colleagues, Anyone and everyone you truly care about, even if they're no longer alive, are gathered in your honor. Now imagine that one person whom you really care about, friend, child, partner, parents, you choose. This one person stands up to make a speech about you. A short speech, no more than three or four sentences. And they talk about what you stand for in life what you mean to them, and the role that you have played in their life. And imagine them saying whatever it is deep in your heart you would most love to hear them say. Now most people find that this exercise brings up a whole range of feelings, some warm and loving, and maybe some painful. So take a moment to notice what you're feeling and consider what these feelings tell you. What do they tell you about what truly matters to you? What sort of person you want to be? And what if anything you're currently neglecting? And now, bringing the exercise to an end, notice your breathing, notice your body in the chair, notice the sounds you can hear, open your eyes and notice what you can see, and welcome back. So. How did it go? What did people say about you? What does this tell you about what matters to you? What you want to stand for? 
and what sort of person you want to be. As I said earlier, we only walked through one speech, but you can do that exercise again, imagining two other people making speeches about you. For many people, this simple exercise is quite an eye-opener. It often points to a big difference between what we value doing and what we are actually doing. John, for example, saw that family-related values are most important to him. Camille had fun with her speech, even if it was a bit over the top. She was somewhat surprised to see that travel and adventure featured so prominently. So what did, what did you imagine? Again, what did people say about you? What does this tell you about what matters to you? What you want to stand for? And what sort of person you want to be? So take some time to do the exercise again uh, and feel free to do it with two more speeches as well. All right, so great work. In the next lesson, I'm going to help you clarify your values even further. We're going to delve even deeper into values. I'll see you there.